Episode 1, Come Back Kid. Early in the morning, Maryland University was always quiet. Today was the day of the Dragon Boat Race, and most of the students took the opportunity to sleep in till late midday. But there were exceptions. Hey, look, he's hot. No matter how hot he is, he's still a scavenger. He will always be a loser. You're talking about Harry Parker? I met him three years ago when he came to school. He's the famous rubbish prince, the poorest man in Maryland University. Every year he relies on the scholarship to eat. As usual, Harry was inspecting the school's trash cans early in the morning. Everyone who saw him talked about him. Some despised him, some pitied him, and some hated him. There were also those who deliberately caused him trouble. But Harry was already used to it. Even though people around him commented on his source of livelihood, his expression remained unchanged. Unperturbed, he held out his long clamp, took the water bottle out of the trash, and put it in his backpack. For the past three years, he relied on waste collection to support his school expenses. He had met all sorts of people, and if he had let their comments affect his mood, he would not have been able to resist until now, let alone find a girlfriend. Thinking about this, Harry smiled slightly. That was the thing that made him happiest. After almost half a year of relentless pursuit, Bella, who was in the same class as him, had finally agreed to become his girlfriend two weeks ago. That was also the reason he'd been waking up so early lately. He had just spent $300 he had saved from picking up trash to buy a phone for Bella. It was a phone with the fastest refresh rate and the best camera in the tech world currently. Now his wallet was empty, so he had to collect more junk before the garbage truck came. Unfortunately, the price of junk has dropped too much lately. It was not easy to earn this money. Harry was a little worried. When he entered school, he chose to specialize in geology. He wasn't learning so well, so he couldn't make money based on his academic knowledge. He also did not want to work as an unskilled worker. He wanted to take a look at the talent market tomorrow. As he thought about it, he kept wandering around. He searched from the dormitory downstairs to the door of the art department next door and more or less picked up half a bag of junk. Maryland University covered a large area. After a while, he was like running a mini marathon. Harry felt his legs weaken. He looked around and found a chair to sit on. After resting for a while, he wanted to continue collecting junk. However, when he raised his foot, he inadvertently saw something beside him. It was a half-filled bottle of Sprite. It was leaning by the armrest and the lid was loose. Someone must have left it there. Harry hesitated. An unclaimed bottle of Sprite could quench his thirst and the bottle could be sold for 30 cents. Should he drink it? Of course he wanted to drink it and it wasn't like he needed to pay for it. Harry did not hesitate and picked it up. He opened it and drank it in one gulp. Just like this, it was gone. He drank more than half of it in two gulps. Marilyn was still hot in the morning in June. The Sprite was just enough to quench his thirst. He drank comfortably, narrowing his eyes with pleasure. After all, it was a drink that cost $3, worth 10 plastic bottles. He usually didn't have that kind of spare money. What are you doing? That's my drink. Suddenly, a slightly shocked shout nearby interrupted Harry's drinking. He was stunned for a moment. Still sucking the bottle, he turned his head. He saw a dumbfounded girl in a pleated yellow skirt. The atmosphere froze for a moment. Their eyes met, and they were both speechless. I I'm sorry, I, I thought no one wanted it. Harry came back to his senses and awkwardly stopped drinking. He tightened the bottle lid and handed it over. Here you are. There was only one sip left in the bottle. You! The girl in the pleated skirt glared at Harry angrily, turned and left with disgust. Harry shrugged and pretended not to see. He opened the lid, drank the rest, and happily put the bottle in his backpack. Harry! Just as he was doing this, a girl jogged over from the left. Harry looked up and smiled. Daisy, what are you doing here? Daisy was Harry's classmate. Her family wasn't poor, but they weren't rich either. 
She wore a simple dress and no makeup. She didn't look remarkable. But at the same time, she was Bella's best friend. For Harry to be with Bella, her discreet help was indispensable. Harry was very grateful to her, so he spoke politely. I have something to tell you. Daisy's face was red, and she was out of breath. Obviously, she came here in a hurry. Under Harry's puzzled gaze, she hesitated for a moment, then gritted her teeth and said, Well, Bella asked me to return this to you. She wants to break up with you. Daisy handed him a phone. It was the one he gave to Bella. Harry's smile froze on his face. Break up? He looked at Daisy with a bitter expression. Did she say why? Daisy showed a trace of pity. She asked me to tell you that you are from different worlds. The junk you pick up in a year is not as much as Benedict's salary. Harry was silent for a moment. After a while, he let out a bitter laugh. So it's because of the money. Harry looked at himself. He once worried that their relationship wouldn't last long. After all, with this job of picking up trash, she must have heard some rumors. He could understand if she could not bear the ridicule of others and wanted to break up. But she chose a playboy because of money. Honestly, Harry was quite disappointed with Bella when he heard this news. Benedict was very famous at Maryland University. He was known as the richest man in the art department. His family probably had hundreds of millions of assets. He usually wore all kinds of luxury clothes and had a GTR car. He hopped from girlfriend to girlfriend, never kept one for more than a month. Such a person was obviously not suitable for a serious relationship. Bella was with him only for money. Harry initially thought that since Bella agreed to be with him, it was enough to prove that she was not a vain woman. That was why he prepared a surprise for her, but it seemed that this woman was very good at pretending she was selfless. Fine, it was better to know about this sooner than later. Such a woman was not worth entertaining. Thinking about it, he felt a little better. He looked up and thanked Daisy. Then he took the phone and turned to leave. Harry, don't be too sad. Bella's not worth it for you to miss her. Daisy was a kind girl. She felt a little guilty and wanted to comfort Harry. It's not your fault. Thank you. Harry didn't even turn his head. He waved his hand and left. He walked to a bench where no one was around. He sat down and looked at the phone in his hand, thinking about all the things that happened in the past. Suddenly, he felt that it was somewhat boring, that things like dating were not realistic without money. He was lost in thought. Thinking about something, Harry fumbled in his pocket and pulled out a new phone card. He opened it and put it in the phone returned by Bella. The start screen flashed. Then, text messages appeared, one after the other. The family committee has confirmed that the family member, Harry, is 21 years old and is in line with the age of inheritance. The property will be officially handed over today. Please go to the Citibank branch on 15th Avenue in Laurel to acquire the inheritance within one month of receiving the notification. If you exceed the time limit, by default, you will waive your rights to the inheritance. Since you are a direct descendant of the family, and have the right of inheritance. Starting today, you can apply for unconditional help from the family only once. Please note that this opportunity cannot be transferred by any other heir. The family commanding tone and the old fashioned style made Harry suddenly feel a little nostalgic. He didn't know how many people in the family remembered him after he left six years ago. This was the surprise he had planned to give Bella at his birthday party. A surprise that would make ordinary people wild with joy. Unfortunately, Bella will never have the chance. Harry Parker was actually not poor. He was just passing the family's trial. According to the family rules, all members of the Lynn family had to leave the family's protection at the age of 15. They had to live independently for six years without any help from the family. During this time, there was no restriction on their way of life. As long as he could survive, he would be able to get 1% of the family property. 
This number didn't seem like much, but the terrifying total amount of the property made its real value so great that it was sensational. Parker's Financial Group was a name that was known to everyone in the Forbes charts. It was one of the representative industries of Harry's family. It was hiding in a world that ordinary people could not touch. It controlled the economic direction of the world and played with big and small countries in the palm of its hand. It could easily trigger global economic turmoil. In terms of wealth, Parker's financial group could buy about one-third of the earth, and now 1% of it belonged to Harry. According to the family rules, this huge amount of wealth could be used for himself or invested. If he chose to rely on the money to sit around waiting to die for the rest of his life, no one would object. In fact, there was this type of successor in every generation and there was quite a few of them. Therefore, to increase competition within the family and to ensure its continuity, the ancestral teachings stated that each direct descendant had the right to register for re-election and compete for the head of the next generation of the family. And the criterion of the evaluation was to see who could use the inheritance to create a higher value. Harry had considered this when he left the family, but now he lacked interest. There were two other direct heirs of this generation, and these two were truly awesome figures. One of them had a large mercenary group in the Middle East. Not including the main force, the mercenary group had many smaller legions of men. The other was a famous stockbroker genius. He was said to have tricked the family's professional operators into selling them their raw shares in all major industries. Now he had them in the palm of his hands. Harry had no intention of competing with them. His parents died early, and he did not have many acquaintances in the family. He just wanted to be an ordinary person and lead a peaceful and wealthy life. If he were to compete for the position of head of the family, he was safe at home. But the bullets in the Middle East were deadly. Thinking of this, Harry suddenly stood up and threw all the plastic bottles that he had picked up half the morning into the trash can. Then, he walked out of the school. The nearest city bank branch was located in the neighboring city, Laurel. He planned to go there now and take possession of the inheritance. Harry's life was about to change forever. Episode 2. Mo Money, Mo Problems. Harry took a taxi to Citibank. He paid over $60 as the cab fare, but he didn't feel rich now. After all, he was a billionaire. He was able to manage in life when he was short of money. Now that he had money, why suffer? It was only $60. When he got out of the car, it was already 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Although it was noon, there were still many people at the Citibank branch. Harry recalled that someone in his family once said, there is no rest in the service industry. Citibank was an international bank that the Bank of Laurel were familiar with, but knew very little about. In the eyes of ordinary people, it might be a distant joint venture, but for the Parker family, it was their service industry. A service industry that managed a small amount of their money. Harry walked to the door, checked the constituents of his pocket, and entered the hall. A receptionist immediately approached him. Hello, sir. I am the receptionist here, and you can call me Stacy. May I help you? The person who spoke was a woman with a kind face. Her figure was well-proportioned, and her appearance was above average. Her voice sounded a little high-pitched, which added quite a bit of charm. Harry sized her up for a moment and replied, I came for an asset transfer. Asset transfer? Stacy repeated in a puzzled tone and with a questioning look. She looked up at Harry. He wore ordinary clothes. His skin was dark from the sun, and he even had small scratches on his fingers. He was obviously a poor man. Reaching this conclusion, her eyes became somewhat contemptuous. Such a person could not be a Citibank customer. Sir, the minimum transfer amount for our bank assets is one million. Her high salary made her maintain basic courtesy. It was her job to be so, after all. 
She did not sneer, but said sarcastically, How much are your assets worth? Harry thought for a while and answered somewhat helplessly, I'm not sure about the details. Indeed, it was not clear. The investment made the family's business assets grow exponentially. He couldn't tell how much 1% of a family business was worth. But it will certainly not be less than $1 million. Harry was sure about this. Stacy looked at Harry suspiciously, thinking he was pretending to be cool. Still, she maintained her professionalism and pointed to a counter, saying, This is the business service area for over $5 million. What do you think? Harry shook his head. Too little. This is the business area worth more than $10 million. It's still too little. The business area worth more than $50 million? It's still too little. Stacy remained silent. She looked at Harry with a trace of disdain. Sir, $50 million is the highest quota in the normal business area. Do you have assets over $100 million? The woman had plenty of reason to doubt Harry. In her view, even if he wanted to keep a low profile, he would not be dressed so carelessly. How could such a person have assets worth $100 million? Harry shook his head. No. Stacy was speechless. $100 million is too little. It should be at least $10 billion, Harry continued. She was stunned now. After a while, she came to her senses and sneered. There must be a limit to making stuff up, don't you think? She didn't even bother to call him Mr. anymore, considering he was nothing but a troublemaker. How many people dare to say they have tens of billions of assets? Harry sighed. He didn't bother to argue with her. Too many people looked down on him. He could not explain it to each of them. He simply raised his head and looked around. Seeing the sign of the VIP reception room, he headed over there. Stacy was stunned for a moment before rushing after him. Hey, what are you doing? Security. Too bad, it was already too late. Harry walked quickly and pushed the half-closed door. In the reception area, a middle-aged man sitting behind a desk looked up. When he saw Harry, he was obviously stunned. Then his eyes fell on Stacy, who was following him, and with an unfriendly expression, he said, Stacy, what are you doing? I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Foles, I'm sorry. Stacy kept apologizing, becoming more and more flustered. She grabbed Harry's hand and tried to pull him out. I will take him away now. Harry did not move, and Stacy's strength was not enough, so she could not pull him away at all. Mr. Foles, is it? Is that how you treat VIP customers? Harry slowly pulled Stacy's hand away, walked leisurely in front of the desk, and sat down calmly. After a moment of astonishment, Mr. Foles smiled. Sir, you want to withdraw some cash. His expression was mocking and his tone disbelieving, as if he didn't think that Harry had that much money. Harry wasted no time with him. He took something out of his pocket and slammed it on the table. See for yourself, he said lightly. Mr. Foles chuckled and tilted his head, looking at him indifferently. Then, suddenly he jumped out of his seat. Mr. Foles. At this point, the security guards finally came. A few tall, strong men entered the office and reached out to grab Harry. Harry acted as if he didn't see the scene. He was focused on picking his nails. Mr. Foles, if you are not free, I will leave. No, Mr. Foles suddenly came back to his senses and panicked. If he missed such a large sum of money, he might lose his job. He immediately realized his mistake and quickly tried to fix it. What I mean is that you don't have to go through so much trouble. Mr. Parker, we can approve your transaction now. Then he scolded the guards. You have nothing to do here, so leave. If you scare Mr. Parker, would you like to lose your job? The security guards were all dumbfounded. They looked at each other and left, confused. 
This scene stunned Stacy, who was at the door. What was going on? Could it be that this man was really a secret billionaire? Why are you still standing there? Go and bring Mr. Parker some coffee. Mr. Foles turned and scolded Stacy again. Make sure you bring our finest cold brew, understand? Yes, Stacy didn't dare to ask what the best coffee was and went out to the door, confused. Mr. Parker, there was a misunderstanding just now. I would like to apologize. As there was no one else in the room, Mr. Foles' attitude was even more humble. He asked Harry, what can we do for you? Mr. Foles was afraid. He acknowledged that what Harry gave him was a certificate of asset security. It showed that he rented the most secure safe from Citibank, and he even rented five of them. The rent of these five safe boxes was one million per year. One could imagine how valuable the things inside were. But that was not the point. The point was that this voucher had three signatures of Part B. One belonged to the CEO of Citibank's headquarters, one to Citibank's Asia Pacific CEO, and the other to the bank's president. Thanks to his business experience, Mr. Foles was able to understand what these three signatures represented. Such a situation occurred only when the group's top management actively asked to be custodians. He almost rejected the project that the higher-ups wanted to carry out. When he thought about it, he felt a wave of fear in his heart. He was afraid that Harry would go back on his word. At that point, he may lose his job on the spot. I want to complete the transfer of assets and withdraw some cash. Harry looked at him. Also, get me an asset manager. I might have some questions to ask. I need someone with experience. Ten billion. Mr. Foles felt his legs trembling and broke out in cold sweat. Mr. Parker, this goes above my pay grade to handle assets worth more than ten billion. Please wait for a moment. I will give CEO Hardigan a call. Seeing that Harry nodded in agreement, he pulled out his phone and headed for the door to make a call. Meanwhile, Stacy brought the coffee and heard the voice of Mr. Foles. She didn't hear very well, only vaguely a few words. 10 billion, asset management, requires authorization. But even so, Stacy was scared silly. Just now, she had looked down on the boy that came in. And now, his matter actually required Mr. Foles to turn to the CEO? What did this mean? This meant that, with just one sentence, he could make her lose this hard-earned job. She instantly panicked. When she brought coffee, her eyes were unfocused. It wasn't until she placed the cup on the table and saw Harry picking it up and slowly taking a sip that she regained her composure, although her face was still pale. Mr. Parker, Stacy grabbed Harry's hand and begged. It's all my fault. I beg you, please don't tell Mr. Foles. Stacy, what are you doing? Let him go. Mr. Foles just ended the call and entered. When he saw this scene, he said angrily, How dare you bother Mr. Barker? Get out! But Stacy did not dare to leave. She knew that if she left now, she would not be called to come back to work tomorrow. She was still pulling Harry's sleeve, and her tone was getting more and more desolate. She begged bitterly, Mr. Parker, I know I was wrong. I... Not to worry, Harry put down his coffee cup. He initially thought to make things difficult for Stacy. He was also human, so it was inevitable that he would have emotions. Stacy looked down on him so naturally, he wouldn't mind giving her a lesson. However... When he saw the bright and beautiful woman begging him, he suddenly lost interest. He said to himself, Harry, after all, you were born at the top of the pyramid. Those people who walk the same path as you, most of them spend their entire lives creating value for you. Is it necessary for you to get down to the level of this kind of person? Harry felt that it was not worth it, so he said, you can leave. I did not take this matter to heart. Stacy cried with joy. She bowed again and thanked him. Covering her mouth, 
She walked out the door. Harry looked at her back. At this point, he suddenly understood the meaning of money. With a single sentence, he could change the fate of an ordinary person. This was the power of money. He realized this. Then, he heard a hearty laugh. Young Mr. Harry, I was looking forward to seeing you. Episode 3, Winner Takes All. Harry looked up and saw a lively old man at the door. This old man was about 70 years old. His hair was white, but it was neatly combed, fixed at his temples. He wore a good black suit with a bow tie and a cane in his hand. He looked at Harry with a trace of affection in his eyes. Harry was puzzled. He was sure he had never seen this person before, but why did he feel a strange sense of familiarity? He could not understand, so he asked, You are... Mr. Foles hurriedly bowed and greeted, President Parker. No need to introduce me. You may leave. The old man smiled broadly. He went in and let Mr. Foles leave. Instead of sitting at the desk, he pulled a chair and sat down next to Harry. It's been a dozen years, and you don't recognize me anymore. I'm your father's steward, Nate Parker. When you were young, I held you with my own arms. Nate Parker? You are Uncle Nate? Harry remembered now. He felt happy to see someone close after so long. Uncle Nate, why are you here? Prestigious families were bound through their blood, but feelings of affection were relatively weak. Nate Parker had been Harry's father steward for 27 years. It wasn't until Harry's parents suddenly died that he resigned and he left the family. Harry was one of the few people who really had feelings for him. I am now the CEO of the Citibank branch in Maryland City. The old man winked at Harry and smiled, seeing him astonished. Young Harry, I know you must wonder why an old man like me suddenly became the CEO of Citibank. Harry didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Nate was a funny person. Even though he was old, he didn't take things too seriously. Uncle Nate, I'm really curious, but if it's not convenient for you to say, why would it be inconvenient? Nate waved his hand. It was your father's orders. He left me a sum of money and said that the economy was growing too fast and that the depreciation rate was too high. He asked me to help you manage your assets in advance. Harry was stunned. He always thought that Nate had left their family because he wanted to live his own life. Although he could understand this, he still felt uncomfortable. At the time, he had lost all his family members. Precisely at that painful moment, Nate left. It was a big blow to him, but it seemed that reality played a prank on him. Nate, who was almost 70 years old back then, left his inviolable job as a housekeeper for the sake of his property and engaged in banking and investment services. Harry could not imagine how much effort he put into this. All he knew was that from now on, this old man with a friendly smile was someone he could not disappoint for the rest of his life. He was not a relative. He was more than that. Uncle Nate, thank you, he said in a low voice. Nate's smile became even warmer. He took no pride in his achievements. He was still as humble and gentle as he had been in the last 27 years. He said, young Harry Parker has grown up. Then he started laughing again. Harry, don't blame me for not helping you. I really wanted to help. But I didn't dare disobey the family rules. Harry nodded. I know. By the way, Uncle Nate, how much money did they give me? I think a few tens of billions. Nate's tone was very light as if he did not take it seriously. He looked at his watch, stood up, and said to Harry, We will know the exact amount after seeing it. Harry, come. I will take you to the vault. It should all be prepared. As he said this, he made an inviting gesture and took a half step back. Although he was no longer a butler, he still behaved like one. Harry followed him out of the VIP office. They turned a corner and went down a bright corridor. After walking for 10 minutes, they reached the end of the corridor. 
They went through the sealed metal scanning room and turned another corner. In front of them appeared a huge white metal door. This is a chromatic steel alloy gate. It is punctured, resistant, durable, and can absorb a large amount of impact force. It is the material of choice for international investment and insurance companies. Nate explained with a smile. He walked to the door and scanned his retina, fingerprints, and palm prints. Then he took out a key. The security officer in charge was following him closely. He pulled out a second key and combining the two, opened the door. Sir, President Parker, please follow me. The officer led them to the place where the safe was stored. Then he motioned to Harry and said, Mr. Parker, you need to verify your retina scans and fingerprints. Harry nodded and followed his instructions. The safe opened immediately with a click. The officer in charge took out the information and handed it to Harry. Harry waved his hand. Give it to Uncle Nate. The officer was stunned for a moment and quickly handed it over. Nate smiled and glanced at it. He raised his eyebrows and said, Harry, the Parker family is a bit stingy. The security officer was taken aback. Did President Parker actually call this young man Harry? What was going on? Harry was very curious. How much is it? This property is divided into three categories. One is general supply, the other is an original industrial stock, and the other is cash. Nate said, these include precious metals and precious stones. Each is worth $10 billion, and the cash is also $8.8 billion. The officer was shocked. There was more than $20 billion here. So why did he say the Parker family was stingy? Harry also could not stay calm. So much money? You think that's a lot? Nate looked strangely at Harry. Harry, don't you know? Your father inherited the same amount as you. That was more than 20 billion 20 years ago. Harry was amazed. When he thought about it that way, it really wasn't much. In 20 years, how much had the dollars depreciated? The total amount did not actually change. Perhaps seeing that Harry was not satisfied, Nate winked at him. Harry, it's okay. The family is stingy, but your father is very generous. Harry looked at him. Uncle Nate, what do you mean by that? Although the inheritance of all members of the Parker family will belong to the family after their death and will be used as starting money for the next generation, if they start their own business and earn their own money, they can control it independently. Nate smiled broadly. He leaned over and whispered, Harry, your father left you 20 billion. 20 billion? Harry was shocked. He remembered that his father was a business whiz. So many people openly supported him to become the head of the family. But he would never have thought that his father would save so much money for him. 20 billion is the initial amount. Nate seemed pleased with himself. All these years, I took the opportunity of working for Citibank and I invested in their VC funds. The amount of money has doubled. Now it is 40 billion. He raised four fingers. I set up a foundation in your name. Occasionally I do charity work. You can use this money anytime, anywhere. Harry was dumbfounded. No wonder. No wonder Uncle Nate didn't care to start over. He did not expect the money left by his father to be even more than what the family gave him. 28 billion plus 40 billion. In this case, I now have a fortune of 68 billion. That's too much. Harry was excited. 68 billion was equivalent to what the other two achieved after so much effort and in so many years. He even felt proud in his heart. So what if one is a stock genius? So what if the other is a ruthless lore lord? I'm sorry, I have a father who's stronger than all of you. He finally regained his composure, becoming rich all of a sudden. It was hard to control his feelings. Let's take out some cash first, Harry said to Nate. Uncle Nate, the other funds will be at your disposal for investment. The profits will be, Harry, your father has paid me in advance. Nate shook his head and smiled. The profits are shared. This is the rule. 
The salary is the salary. Uncle Nate, I know you don't lack money, but if you don't take your share of the profit, it means I'm not loyal. Harry insisted, 10%, you have to take 10% no matter what, otherwise I'll feel bad. Nate felt warm in his heart, all right, then treat it like I'm borrowing it from you. I'll use it to invest and make more money. After withdrawing the money, Nate led Harry to the bank entrance. Originally, Harry wanted to have a meal with Nate. The two of them hadn't seen each other for more than 10 years, so they had a lot to talk about. But Nate explained that the transfer of assets was not a simple matter, let alone such a large sum of money. After Harry had signed the contract, he still had a lot of things to do before completing the procedures. He had to make the most of his time to complete the inheritance as soon as possible. Harry did not insist. The two agreed to have a good meeting in a few days, then parted at the door. Unexpectedly, just as Harry came out with his money case, he bumped into Stacy. Mr. Parker, what a coincidence. We meet again. Stacy had changed into another set of clothes. She wore a waist-length British suit and a short skirt. She also had applied some light makeup. She looked even more attractive than before. She walked out to the car and smiled shyly at Harry. Did you drive here? If not, let me give you a ride. Harry was somewhat speechless. How is this a coincidence? Your skirt is wrinkled, which makes it obvious that you've been waiting a long time. And still, you say it's a coincidence? This was the power of money. He thought that compared to Bella, Stacy's appearance and temperament were even more perfect. Along with her pretense of being young and naive, her charm was greater than Bella's. But the more it was like this, the more bored Harry felt. The value of life could be measured in terms of money. And the foundation of love was also money. But love itself could not be about money. Otherwise, it was the same as prostitution. No need. I'll call a car. He called Nate, and very soon, under Stacy's disappointed gaze, a Lincoln augmented vehicle stopped in front of Harry. Sir, President Parker ordered us to send you back. The driver got out of the car and took Harry's bag. His tone was respectful. Harry nodded. He ignored Stacy, who was staring at him with anticipation, and got into the car. Stacy looked at him, downtrodden, disappointed that she had missed the opportunity to change her life. Then, she seemed to think of something and quickly got into the car. Harry returned to the dormitory. Episode 4 Taunting Harry. Harry opened the door and entered. There was no one inside. Today was Bella's birthday. Benedict invited all his classmates to her birthday party, so no one was left in the classroom. Of course, Harry was not included among those classmates. He didn't want to go anyway. He knew that Benedict would mock him if he saw him. As for Bella, that woman would value money above all else. Not only would she not defend him, but she would mock him too. Forget it, he thought. Why bother with such things? He has money now, so why bother with the woman? That was what Harry said to himself. Then he tossed his case under the bed and lay down, getting ready to sleep. Lately, he'd been up early to pick up trash, so he was beyond tired. Now that he no longer needed to worry about his life, he had to treat himself better. Just as he was about to fall asleep, his phone rang suddenly. He picked it up to take a look and saw a message on the class group chat. Benedict is awesome. Look, our table has Remy Martin, worth $1,000. We also have Martel Cardon Bleu. The people in the group posted pictures. They were all extremely excited. Some students who could not get there felt envious. Everyone was admiring how rich Benedict was. The spending trend in Maryland City was not very high. Most students had to pay $750 per month and usually made a little more from their jobs. They'd never drink such expensive wine. 
Where's Benedict? Benedict is too generous. Someone began flattering him. Benedict went to the Rosewater Hotel with Bella. Hee hee hee. Wow, watch your words. Harry is in the group too. So what if he's in the group? He's a loser. Can't we trash talk him? That's right, he picks up trash every day. It's embarrassing for me to be in the same class as him. Well said. Benedict suddenly appeared and sent a sum of money on the group chat with the password on it. Guys, grab the Venmo. In the meantime, I'll help Harry take care of his ex-girlfriend. Harry was already furious, and looking at the venmo money, he got even angrier. Immediately, the passcode messages flooded the screen. Harry's a green-haired turtle. Harry's a green-haired turtle. Harry kicked the desk and stood up. They had gone too far. Benedict saw on his mobile phone that Harry is a green-haired turtle had a good impact. Satisfied, he said. Everyone eat and drink well. Bella and I will lie down at the hotel and come later. Is Harry there? Come eat with us. Bella added, That's right, Harry, don't hide. You can never compare to Benedict anyway. Harry's eyes burned with fury. He immediately replied, I'm on my way. He left the campus and sat by the side of the road, waiting for a taxi. A red Chevrolet stopped beside him. Harry looked at the license plate number and found it familiar. When the window rolled down, it was indeed Stacy. Mr. Parker, what a coincidence. We meet again. In the car, Stacy looked pleasantly surprised. Once again, Harry was speechless. She said the same thing twice in one day. Wasn't she tired? Are you following me? Harry said unceremoniously. What a difference from the famous trash prince in the school that everyone avoided. Harry's current net worth was tens of billions, and Stacy was one of the few people who knew about it. Wealth can make people jealous and drive them crazy. She must be following him for a reason. Stacy opened her mouth, trying to explain, but Harry didn't give her a chance. He raised his hand and interrupted her. What do you want? Make it clear. Stacy paused for a moment. She did not expect Harry to get straight to the point. After pondering a moment, she made a decision. She said, It's very simple. You have money. I need money. So I want to borrow from you. Harry frowned. It's true that I have money, but why should I lend it to you? My father is sick. He needs money for his medical treatment. As long as you're willing to help me, I'll do anything. When Stacy talked about her father, her eyes turned red. Then she said, I really can do anything. If you like me, I can be with you. Harry rested his chin and pondered. Money was really something that could save lives or harm people. To save her father's life, Stacy would not even hesitate to give up her dignity. Thinking about it, saving someone's life was more important. Anyway, he did not need this little bit of money. He said, I can lend you the money, but not now. If you're not in a hurry, help me do something first. Seeing that Harry agreed, Stacy was delighted. Mr. Parker, where are you going? I'll take you there. She even changed the way she could dress him. The meeting place was the only five-star hotel in Maryland City, Star Moon Hotel. The hotel was located in the center of Maryland, occupying an entire 99-story skyscraper. At this point, in the private room reserved for Harry's classmates, the atmosphere was at its peak. Benedict and Bella had just arrived. Benedict, everyone is toasting for you. We thank you for your hospitality today. We're all classmates. You don't have to be so polite. You're in the same class as Bella, so I want to ask you all to take care of her. You are too polite. This is what we should do. Benedict complacently drank the glass of wine he had toasted. He looked at Jen and asked, Where is Harry? Didn't he say he was coming? 
Why do you care about him? Everyone is so happy today. You will spoil our mood if he comes. That won't do. Harry is Bella's ex-boyfriend, and it's rare for everyone to get together like this. He has to come, so I can thank him for taking care of Bella so far. Benedict said he wanted to thank him, but his face showed malice. Obviously, he wanted Harry to come so he can humiliate him in front of everyone. At this moment, the door of the private room opened, and Harry entered. He swaggered in with his head held high. What surprised everyone even more was that Harry was accompanied by a beauty who could rival Bella. When everyone saw her holding Harry's arm intimately, they knew that the relationship between the two of them was not platonic. The whole room suddenly fell silent. Everyone understood that this was the battlefield between Benedict and Harry. Benedict stood abruptly, staring at Harry with a contemptuous look. Showing no sign of weakness, Harry returned the same look, and for a moment, a subtle current stirred in the private room. This did not stop the crowd from secretly sizing up the two girls who had provoked the war. If Bella's beauty was like the sun, bright and blinding, including her body and her skin, Stacy, Harry's companion, was the sultriness of the moon. She completely outclassed the main woman of today's party, Bella in all respects. To tell the truth, Bella was very nicely dressed today. She was wearing a Chanel dress, diamond heels, and her hair was decorated with crystal hairpins. She was as bright and beautiful as a princess. In comparison, Stacy wore only casual clothes from a regular brand, but still, her dignified personality shining from within could not be overshadowed by Bella's clothes. Benedict and Harry looked at each other for a while and then suddenly smiled. Harry, you finally came. According to the rules, you came late, so you should drink three glasses of wine. As he spoke, he took the glass and filled it with white wine. That's right, you have to drink three glasses. Harry remained calm and quiet. He found an empty seat and motioned for Stacy to sit beside him. Seeing that Harry was goaded to drink, Stacy laughed and said, Mr. Parker has something to do tonight. I'll drink for him. She was more beautiful than Bella anyway, but when she opened her mouth, her voice was pure and charming making all the men present feel their hearts melt. Everyone was wondering where Harry had met such a beautiful woman. Seeing that Harry was not drinking the wine, Benedict was very unhappy. But when he looked at the charming Stacy, his heart filled with jealousy and lust. Harry, you are too weak if you let a beauty like her drink for you. However, since the young lady has spoken, I will take a step back. You drink two glasses of wine, and she gets one. Bella, who was sitting next to Benedict, had been completely ignored since Harry had brought beauty in. Bella was already upset. Now that she saw Benedict leering disgustingly, how could she not know what dirty thoughts he had? Bella was really angry. She told Harry, Harry, you sure are a capable man. You just broke up with me and you already found such a beautiful woman. You were afraid you'd be mocked if you came to a party, so you specially hired her to help you. She glanced at Stacy and continued, This woman's demeanor is not bad. You've probably spent all the money you've saved from picking up trash to hire her, haven't you? Episode 5, Mr. Parker. Bella was very unhappy. Harry brought a woman even prettier than her to her own party, even though he was clearly so poor. This was her birthday, but everyone ignored her. She wanted to expose his lies. He was nothing but a trash scavenger. Darling, Harry is the famous trash prince in our school. He deals with smelly garbage all day and doesn't have much money on him. Don't be fooled by him, Bella said to Stacy. Benedict's eyes lit up. He thought, why didn't I think Harry is just a poor loser? How could there be such a beautiful woman willing to follow him? She must be an actress he paid for with money. Tonight, this beautiful woman will not be able to escape. Thus, he said, Harry, is it true what Bella said? From what website did you hire this beauty? 
How much did you pay? Everyone believed that Harry would deny and find excuses. Who knew that Harry would nod and openly admit? Yes, I hired her. I spent more than six million. How much? Everyone thought they had heard wrong. I always thought you were an honest man, but I didn't expect you to be so boastful. Benedict's first laughed out loud, and then his expression changed instantly. He felt that Harry was making fun of him. Benedict was a well-known figure in Maryland. How can Harry afford to be so arrogant? Benedict said with a vicious face. Harry, we are all classmates here. What do you mean six million? Stop pretending. Harry didn't care that Benedict became hostile. He didn't seem worried at all. I'm not as good as you. You're much better at acting than I am. What do you mean? Benedict shouted angrily. Didn't you call me here today to humiliate me? But I don't like things that have been used by others, so I have to thank you. Looks like you also like to pick up trash. Harry's words stunned everyone. When they finally reacted, some people couldn't hold back their laughter. His words were very accurate, alluding to the fact that Bella had many boyfriends, and Benedict had snatched Harry's girlfriend. This was also very embarrassing. Bella slammed the table. Benny, he's insulting us. Benedict, who was a little slow to react, immediately smashed his wine glass into the table. He said angrily, No one in Maryland has ever dared to talk to me like that. You have some guts. Benedict walked up to Harry, looking down at him. Let me tell you, there are two types of people in this society that you can't afford to offend. Those who have power or money. I have both money and power. I can make sure that you won't be let out of here today. Harry also stood up and looked at Benedict indifferently. You have money and power. You're so amazing, aren't you? I'm also telling you that there are two kinds of people you can't afford to offend. That is, those who have more money and more power than you. Benedict suddenly laughed. He did not need to explain so much to Harry. I told you not to think about leaving the hotel tonight. Of course, if you kneel and beg for mercy now, I might let you go when I'm in a good mood. Harry sneered. Actually, if you hadn't broke up with me, I was going to give you a big surprise today. It doesn't matter if I say it now. I won't pretend anymore. I'm a billionaire. People looked at each other. What nonsense was Harry saying? Harry had a mischievous smile on his face as he said to Benedict, You don't want me to leave the hotel. Very good. Saying this, he took out his phone and dialed a number. Uncle Nate, can you do something for me right now? Nate replied respectfully. Mr. Harry, what orders do you have? Buy the Star Moon Hotel in Maryland City for me, right now. Then, have all the employees gather in the hotel lobby. Yes, sir. After he hung up, Harry sat down in his chair and drank tea. The phone call just now was on speaker, so everyone heard the conversation clearly. Everyone thought the same thing. Harry had really gone crazy. The Star Moon Hotel? It was the only five-star hotel in the entire city of Maryland, owned by the Fang Group. This hotel has made amazing profits since its opening. If it weren't for a Fang Group, many people would want to get their hands on it. Not even Benedict dared to be too presumptuous here. Who did Harry think he was? To buy the Star Moon Hotel? He had gone crazy. Benedict was not in a hurry to deal with Harry. He waited for him to make a fool of himself. About 10 minutes later, someone knocked on the door of the private room. Then, a dignified man in a custom-made suit walked in. The hotel manager was named Landon Cross. He was responsible for the assets of Fang Group in Maryland. He also had connections with the underworld and had a lot of power. He was a well-known figure in Maryland. Even Benedict folks had to lower their heads and be careful of Mr. Cross. As for Benedict, he was no different from an ant in front of him. Of course, Benedict knew Mr. Cross. When he saw him enter, he was pleasantly surprised and thought to himself, why did Mr. Cross come here? Could it be that he came for me? If so, he should show off before him. If Mr. Cross was satisfied, he could offer his family a few projects with profits of over a hundred million. 
So he quickly got up to greet him. Mr. Cross. Mr. Cross ignored Benedict. His eyes were fixed on Harry. He hurried to Harry and shook his hand. Mr. Parker, I'm Mr. Cross, the manager of the Star Room Hotel. Whatever you need, just let me know. Suddenly, there was an absolute silence in the private room. Is this for real? Harry's classmates were shocked. This kind of thing was all fabricated in movies. Who would have thought that such a thing would happen in real life? Benedict's reaction was a bit slow, being completely confused. However, he suddenly felt a chill in his heart. Mr. Cross had so much power and influence in Maryland. He was normal to ignore Benedict, but he was respectful of Harry. Benedict did not dare think about it, and he certainly couldn't believe that such a loser, trash collector like Harry would suddenly become a mysterious super billionaire. Mr. Cross saw no problem in bowing to Harry. He was just a representative of the Fang Group in Maryland. People thought the Fang Group was huge, but in front of the Parker family, it was like a mouse to an elephant. They were on completely different levels. Harry slowly drank his tea. When everyone had more or less digested their shock, he said, are all the employees here? Except for a few people who are on vacation, I asked everyone to gather in the lobby and wait for you to instruct them. Mr. Cross's respectful tone didn't match the fact that he was a top figure in Maryland. All right, then let's go there. Saying this, Harry stood up and left. Stacy, who had quietly served as an arm piece, followed closely behind him. The other students looked at each other for a moment until Benedict spoke. Let's go take a look. He did not believe and did not want to believe. In his eyes, a loser who was comparable to an ant, a scavenger, how can his status actually be equal to that of a billionaire? Under Mr. Cross's lead, Harry took the elevator specially reserved for the president of the hotel and quickly arrived downstairs. Benedict and the rest could only take the ordinary elevator to the lobby or on the first floor. When they came out, they were shocked by the scene in front of them. Hundreds of people lined up neatly and bowed to Harry standing in front of them. Mr. President, Benedict felt dizzy and could barely stand. This wasn't true. He must be drunk. This definitely wasn't true. Bella stared, transfixed at Harry, who was standing in front of everyone, receiving their greetings. Her eyes sparkled, and her expression was complicated. It can't be, right? Is Harry really a billionaire? He is not just an ordinary billionaire. He wanted to buy the Star Moon Hotel, so he bought it. Can you imagine how powerful his background must be? He really hid his identity well. He's already so rich, so why pick up trash every day? Who knows, maybe it's a quirk of the rich. If we offended him before, will it be too late to apologize? All the students were silent, feeling regret in their hearts. Why were they so stupid before? Not only did they try to curry favor with such a wealthy man, but they even offended him. Harry asked all the employees to gather, but he had nothing to tell them. He just introduced himself and let them go. His main purpose was to intimidate these students who did not respect him. Harry, there were some things I did wrong before. I'm sorry. I hope you won't take them to heart. Someone went forward to apologize. Seeing this, others also came, hurrying to apologize to Harry and say good things, fearing that he would hold a grudge. Harry was not angry with these people and waved to show that he did not mind. Everyone let out a sigh of relief and they started leaving the hotel. Extremely embarrassed, Benedict said nothing. He followed behind the crowd, preparing to leave. But how could Harry let him go so easily? The anger in his heart had yet to be vented, and Benedict wanted to leave? Stop! Benedict, who told you to leave? <laughs>